G'day guys. A massive update to the GB300's custom multi-core Game Boy Advance core has just been released. Not only does this make a lot more Game Boy Advance games fully playable, but it also adds a fast forward toggle. We'll take a look at a few games that used to be unplayably slow, but now run almost full speed. We'll start off with 007 Nightfire, which is a 3D first person shooter, similar to Goldeneye, but not really. One thing I've noticed is games using the new custom core do take quite a while to load. We do have a new splash screen after the game's fully loaded. You can see here it says unstable build. So we're in the game now, you can see it is running perfectly fine. This game doesn't run the best on a real GBA, this is just how it uh, performs. But this was pretty much a slideshow previously, but yeah, it is uh, full speed now. It's not perfect, there is quite a bit of sound lag, but considering that this wasn't playable at all previously, it's not that much of a deal breaker. So here's Dave Mira Freestyle BMX2, and you can see it is running full speed. There's no lag spikes or anything like that. This was unplayably slow previously, so it's impressive how much faster it actually is. The game itself is pretty similar to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 on the Game Boy Advanced, except you're on a push bike instead of a uh, skateboard. We've got the Game Boy Advance port of Donkey Kong Country 2, which used to be unplayably slow, but it is running almost full speed. It may be running maybe 5% slower than it should, but it does actually run better than on the Super Nintendo version on this uh, handheld. There's also a lot more content added to this, a lot more collectibles. So this may now be the preferred way to play DKC2 on the GB300. We've got DKC3. You can see it's not quite running full speed, but it is consistently uh, slower, so it's not as if it's lagging. It is just a hard one to run. Uh, I would say it's definitely playable. It looks to be about 5 or 10% slower than it should be. It's worth noting, using the Super Nintendo core on this, it, uh, it was quite slow as well. It was playable, but it definitely wasn't full speed. And as mentioned, this was another one that was pretty much unplayably slow on the stock GBA core. We've got the Yoshi's Island Game Boy Advance port here, and it is perfectly smooth as you can see. There's almost no slowdown, no lags. This used to run really terribly on both the Super Nintendo, but also the Game Boy Advance core on this handheld. So it's impressive that we can actually play it at all now. One thing I haven't noticed yet is the sound lag. So if I jump now, it's not too bad, but it can get up to two or three seconds of sound lag or sound delay. So if you jump, uh, there's about three second delay until it actually makes the sound. It doesn't seem to be doing it now, but it was doing it uh, just on the intro level. It's not really a deal breaker since as mentioned, you pretty much couldn't play this game at all. And if playing it means having a bit of sound lag, it's not the end of the world. This is the one I'm most impressed with. So this is Final Fantasy 1 Origins, and this is a great game to show off the fast forward feature. So this is normal speed here. You can obviously hold down A and it'll run, but that's uh, actually part of the game, not fast forward. So I'll enable fast forward to toggle it on or off. Just hold start and press R once. If we go back, it is uh, now enabled. And if I hold down the run button, it is even faster. So for RPGs like Final Fantasy or Pokemon, it is a brilliant feature. In some harder to run games like Yoshi's Island, the fast forward does almost nothing, but that's to be expected since Game Boy Advance is already pushing this little device to its limits. This is Pokemon Leaf Green, and I have enabled fast forward just so we can skip through the start. And we're finally in the game and you can see how much faster fast forward is. So this is fast forward on, pretty smooth. We'll turn it off. And this is fast forward off. So it's a fair bit faster, maybe two or three times faster. Obviously during harder to run parts, maybe during battles, it won't be as fast, but it is still an improvement over one time speed. So we'll try a battle now and see how much faster it actually is during battles. Straight away, it does seem to be around two or three times faster. So that's good. And it is obviously much faster than one time. So that is brilliant. So if you're a fan of the Game Boy Advance Pokemon games, fast forward is definitely going to help out a lot. 
Not all Game Boy Advance games are playable using this new core. You can see here, this is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, and it doesn't look too bad now, but there are certain parts where it uh, does slow down a fair bit. You can see right there, it did get really choppy. But once we get out of this little half pipe area, it does speed up again. So it's still very slow. This is uh, one time speed, no fast forward. Once we're out, it goes nice and smooth again. So you can see here, not too bad. But if we go back into the half pipe, it slows right down. And there you can see it's lagging. It's a lot better than it used to be, but I would say Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is still not quite playable. Also, although both the SF2000 and GB300 have a custom multi-core version available for it, currently this core is not compatible with the SF2000. I'll just show you what happens if you try to use this custom core. So we've got 007 Nightfire, and you can see the screen has just gone all different colours. Pressing start and select does nothing, you do have to hard power off the system. There is a separate version for the SF2000, which I will link down below. The steps for installing are the same though. Overall, even though the new Game Boy Advance custom core is still marked as very early and full of bugs, I still found it to be way better than the older version. The fact that so many more Game Boy Advance games are actually playable now is a huge win, even if there are pretty big sound issues. I've noticed the sound lag comes and goes. So for example, Yoshi's Island, the first time I tried it, there was around two to three seconds of sound delay. So when I jumped, it took around two to three seconds for the jumping sound to actually play. But on revisiting the game after powering the system off and back on, it seemed to be a lot less noticeable. Another thing worth mentioning is it does take around 25 to 40 seconds to load an actual Game Boy Advance game using this custom core, obviously depending on which game you want to load. Final Fantasy Origins did take the longest at around 40 seconds, but most other games only took around 20 to 25 seconds. This is only really an issue if you like to hop around games every few minutes. For RPGs, you'll definitely find the fast forward feature a nice addition. As mentioned, in some games, fast forward barely makes a difference, but in things like Pokemon, I did notice two to three times speed increase. We'll move over to our Windows 10 laptop and go over how to actually install this new custom core. We're over on our Windows 10 laptop now, and I've just gone to the Reddit thread where this update was posted. So they mentioned the download link is on their Discord, but I've noticed that there is a mirror posted in the comments by Turbulent and 1425. It's a Mediafire link, and I can confirm that at least at the time of filming this, both versions are identical. We'll just download from Mediafire since I don't have a Discord account, and just click download. It's quite a small download, 700k. Once it's finished downloading, we're just going to insert our SD card from our GB300 into our laptop. And we'll just open up our downloads folder. Inside our downloads folder, we should have our GB300 GBA core zipped. We'll just right click on it and unzip it. I like to use 7-zip, but you can use the built-in archiver in Windows 10 or 11. After you've extracted it, you should have a cores folder. And inside should be a GBA folder. And inside that should be the actual core itself. Just want to copy the core. So just highlighting it, Control C. And then we're just going to navigate to our SD card from our GB300. For me, it's D drive. It'll be different for you. Want to open up our cores folder. Want to go down to GBA, not GBAV, but just GBA. Open that up. And this is our old core. You can delete it, but I would recommend just making a backup. So just clicking on it, renaming it, and I'll add BAK to the end of it. Nice and easy, just so we know it's backup. And in here, I'll paste our updated core. There it is there. And that's all there is to it. You would then just add the Game Boy Advance ROMs using your preferred method. Either the GB300 tool or doing it manually in the ROMs folder. We'll quickly go over how to do it manually. So go back to the root of our SD card. It should be a ROMs folder. Open that up. Go down to GBA. Again, not GBAV. Paste all of your Game Boy Advance ROMs in here that you want to use the custom core for. Nice and easy. So we paste them all in. Once they're all in there, go back to the root of the SD card and double click make ROM list.bat. It should generate all the files automatically. Once it's finished, it'll say press any key to continue. Just press any key. And that's it. From here, you can access your ROMs through the games folder on the GB300 itself. If you use something like GB300 tool, you could optionally add them to the stock GBA games list, but still force them to use the custom core. As always, don't forget to safely eject your SD card before removing it so there's no risk of corruption. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.